All right. Welcome. Today's Fusion Monday, week one. So how to get started with Fusion. In class, I already covered how to get an account, and all of you should have an account. Some of you will have a yellow square up here that says you need to register. I'll show how to do that in another video. But before we start in on our Fusion Mondays, which we'll do two little projects each week um, in order to kind of learn Fusion over the course of the first semester. So the first thing we have to do is we need to establish the project. So I have a whole bunch of projects, but I've been teaching Fusion for a long time. So we're going to go new project. And on this, we are going to call it the class we're in, which is IED 4. So IED period 4. So once we do that, we press Enter. And then we're going to go in here, and we are going to create a new uh, some folders. Now, in Fusion, we can go back to the outer page where all the projects are. If you want to do stuff at home or on your own time, design your own parts, feel free to do that. Um, you need to do that. Um, you can create a new project and do it in there. But for this class, everything needs to be done within the IED project. So we're going to go new folder. We're going to call this forward uh, folder. 10,000, and um, this one's going to be called Fusion Monday. And eventually, we're going to do uh, 2,000, I'm sorry, 20,000, and this would be called Spinner. When we do the Spinner project, we'll do it there. New folder, 30,000, and this one will be called the Puzzle Cube. So we see that we have some folders for other projects down the line, but we're going to work mainly in Fusion Monday. So if we double click here, now anything we do and create will automatically save into the Fusion Monday folder. So quick um, tour of Fusion. Um, up here is going to be our icons. Fusion is very popular on starting on the left being the most common and moving towards the right. Um, this is our viewing cube. It allows us to view the three-dimensional object from different sizes. You can click on specific views or corners, and it's rotating. We don't have anything, so you're not seeing it rotate. But um, you can also press and hold and move your mouse, and that will allow you to rotate it in three dimensions as well. There are other ways to do it, but we'll show that. Um, Fusion is... To make 3D objects, and today we're making a cube, something that looks like this, just a simple cube. We start by drawing a two-dimensional square and then essentially like pull it into 3D. So that's how Fusion works for the most part. So let's go ahead and hop back over here. So to do that, we have to start a sketch, which is where we're going to draw our two-dimensional view. So we're going to click on Create Sketch. And then it's going to ask us to choose a plane. At this time, early in Fusion, I don't care which plane you end up selecting. As you become more advanced, choosing the, a proper plane matters. And you notice that this plane corresponds to the front, this plane corresponds to the top, and this plane would correspond to the right. So I'm going to choose the front. Now, we've changed all the work tools. So these are all the work tools for sketching, which you see highlighted here. This was the solid, we could switch back, but we are now in the sketching mode. Once again, you start on the right or the left, you move towards the right, most common. This is line, uh, rectangle, circle, basically free draw. Dimensioning are the ones we're gonna use the most. So we're gonna start with a rectangle. Um, and I want you to get this habit in my class of putting the origin, which is where these crosshairs cross, in the center as much as possible. So we are going to click on a center justified rectangle, which means we can pull it out like so. Okay, so we now have a rectangle. Blue means, blue lines here, mean, I'm pressing escape to get out of making more rectangles, but see it'll keep making rectangles. So to get rid of a rectangular line, you can click on the line and hit delete on the keyboard. You can click on the line and right click and hit delete on your mouse or you could draw a box and in this case if the box is blue it will delete only the things that are fully within the box if I go so that's down into the right if I go up into the left anything touching the box will get deleted so that's how to delete things 
So blue here indicates that it is still um, non-constrained. So I can still modify its size and shape. Once I start giving it dimensions or sizes, it becomes constrained and we can no longer do that. So our first dimension, which is this dimensioning key, is right here. We're going to just do it to 1.5. Our second dimension right here will also be 1.5, as in we're trying to make a cube. So now everything is black, which means if I hit escape to get out of dimensioning, um, I can no longer adjust the size and shape of this cube. So we have now created a two-dimensional sketch of a cube. We now need to stretch it into 3D. To do that, we need to be done with the sketch. There's multiple ways to end the sketch. Finish sketch here. Finish sketch here. Click on one of them. So now we went back to the solids tab, and we are typically starting the left, like I said. So extrude is how we take it from 2D to 3D, like you see in the picture here. So we click on extrude. We click on the profile. And we are going to type into 1.5. And notice 1.5 is here. We could have clicked and typed there or right here. And we have now made a cube. And you're done with your first project. Congratulations. Now, um, we need to save it. So we're going to go here to the old-fashioned floppy disk logo, for those of you who don't know, and hit save. Now, in this class, you're going to create hundreds of files. Um, I, you have to name them something logical. Students all the time use A, 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 B, C, A, D, B, C, D, part, part one, part two. You quickly get distracted or you quickly don't know what you're doing. So we have a nomenclature that's very important. So this is week one. So W, one. And then you're going to put in a hyphen. Your last name because you created it. This is obviously my last name. And then a description or a name of the part. Cube. Very straightforward. Okay, that way the W1 also helps because we're going to do two Fusion Mondays every week. So they'll also go in in order. So when I call up and say, hey, I would like to see week nine's Fusion Monday, they're very easy to find. So we hit enter or return or select, and we now have our first project saved here. If we want a bigger screen, we can click on this button. And it'll also give us full screen and the waffle, as I like to call it, the data panel will appear by pressing on the data panel. Okay, so let's move on to week two, or the second part of week one. So we're going to go ahead and hit new design. So we once again, this time we're going to make a tape roll. We're essentially making this shape. So we're going to draw two concentric circles and we're only going to extrude the outside like a donut shape. So we're going to go start a sketch, just like we do with the cube, select a plane, and now we're going to use a circle. And we're going to select the center, and we're going to drag it out. Now notice there's a blue box highlighted. Right now it's at 3.490. When it's blue like that, I can type in a number directly into the keyboard that will automatically jump to the value I want and put in our dimension. So I'm just going to type in 4 and press enter, and it automatically put in a dimension of four inches. You could still do this, drag it to a size, just an arbitrary size, and then go in and dimension this to say three inches. Or that doesn't really look like a tape roll, we'll do 2.5 inches. That looks more like the tape roll. Um, so how did I adjust the dimension? I just simply double click on it and I can then re-edit. Anything highlighted in blue, you do not have to hit delete or backspace. Um, you can just type right over it. Uh, let's just do 3.75 just to show you. I can change this to 4.25. For this first assignment, I do not really care what your numbers are. I care that you can execute the skills here. And the skills here are showing you different ways to extrude things or to draw, to start projects. So we're going to hit finish sketch. And then um, the next step is we're going to extrude again. The problem here is there is now two different profiles that could be extruded. So unlike the first sketch where it actually automatically selected the one profile available, because it was the only one, this one I'm going to have to pick for sure the donut portion. And we're going to make it just one inch thick. And there is our tape roll. Looks like a tape roll or that shape. We're going to save it as well. 
This is also part of week one. So W1, your last name. And this would be called tape roll. And we press enter or save. And now week one is done. So in the upcoming weeks, I'm going to slowly build upon the skills. Next week, we're going to learn about um, how to draw shapes with just using straight lines and do a little bit of filleting and chamfer. And we are going to slowly march our way through all of these skills. And hopefully by the end of about 10 weeks, you have a good grasp of most of the important ones of the modify and create and some of these other uh Hopefully at the end of 10 weeks, you have a good understanding of how to use Fusion to create 3D objects. Both features, which are the 3D part, that part right here, or uh, with also sketches. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something, and I'll catch you in the next one.